Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Solist, and I'm a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University in the Human Computer Interaction Institute. And I'm excited to present our paper today, Understanding Instructors' Cultivation of Connectedness in K-12 Synchronous Culturally Responsive STEM and Computing Education. Science education and computing are important in an increasingly technological world. However, there's a major lack of diversity in science fields and computing. Women and women of color are particularly underrepresented in these fields. Primary and secondary education are a core time for learners with underrepresented backgrounds to become introduced to science fields and develop their STEM and computing identity. Pedagogy matters. Culturally responsive pedagogy and teaching for both in school and out of school has been an effective approach to engaging a diverse range of youth. In particular, we focused on culturally responsive computing or CRC to embolden girls in a computing camp that we ran in this work. Three pillars are core to the CRC framework. First, CRC approaches support learning about computing and technology by building on what learners know through asset building. It encourages learners to reflect about their own identities as well as critically analyze and decompose existing power structures in computing. And lastly, it aims to connect learners to each other and their communities. Overall, the CRC framework supports positioning learners as techno-social change agents poised to advocate for justice in technology. With the shift to online learning due to COVID, many culturally responsive STEM and computing programs moved online, including ours. Our camp was over the span of three consecutive weekends taking place in the fall. 10 racially diverse middle school girls participated and the camp curriculum covered topics on robotics, computing and design of technology. In full groups or smaller breakout rooms over Zoom, learners also programmed using an online platform with a social robot that we developed pictured here. We additionally ran a number of icebreaker activities and activities with a focus on learners analyzing power and identity dynamics in society and within technology. However, a major challenge that we faced was learners having a sense of connectedness online. Yet this is so important for culturally responsive programs that aim to support learners from marginalized backgrounds. We decided to run a series of interviews with instructors of virtual culturally responsive science and computing programs to better understand this, as well as gain insights on how these instructors may support connectedness online. We interviewed eight instructors, including one from our own team with a background in culturally responsive pedagogy. Instructors of culturally responsive programs were from three different organizations and included a range of different teaching experiences and identified with a range of ethnic and racial backgrounds. The interview questions we had included asking about how they define connectedness and a good sense of community in person and online challenges to creating connectedness online, and how they support building connectedness virtually. We conducted open-ended thematic analysis uh, to unearth a number of themes, also supported by vignettes from our camp. I'll next present a few of the findings, but the rest can be found in the paper. We saw in the interviews in our own camp that cultivation of connectedness was a journey. Instructors had to first go out of their way to create opportunities for connection and collaboration amongst learners, as well as help scaffold when it may not go as planned. For example, in our camp, we encourage learners to discuss with one another in the breakout rooms during the first coding tasks. However, uh, when learners asked for help from their peers about programming, like we had suggested, the requests were often followed by silence in the beginning. They instead sometimes opted to privately message instructors. In the interviews, instructors revealed that they had to heavily scaffold peer-to-peer -peer connection in the beginning. One instructor said, I help facilitate those connections. They're more willing to talk to me when they're not totally empowered to go to the whole group. So I'll find two people or three people who have similar interests and then I'll group them in the next activity we do together. Relatedly, instructors characterized a good sense of internal community as being socially learner-led, such that learners initiated and carried on social interactions with one another. 
one instructor mentioned, as soon as they're kind of leading the way and I'm just there to click the mouse, they're doing amazing. Another instructor of a program that used gather.town where all learners and instructors have avatars stated that good connectedness online was when they could see the learner's avatar's speech bubbles from afar, denoting constant talking. Another major theme we saw related to complexities in achieving equity. For example, learners had different access to devices in our camp. One learner logged on in a tablet, which uh, the smaller display didn't work with the programming interface that we had developed, so their participation was limited. An instructor suggested that equity is key to building a sense of connectedness, since a lack of inequity uh, or a lack of uh, equity illustrates the haves and the have-nots. If someone is left out, it can build resentment. The learners are conscious of what they're missing out on. However, equity was also bolstered by virtual experiences due to geographic barriers in the uh, science and computing programs being lowered. For example, one instructor said, we have built a community across the state. I think students need to see that there are other like-minded girls. You can see a lot of different girls there, and that's important. Lastly, a finding I'd like to share is being online offered different affordances compared to being in person. We found that instructors utilize the home environment for building connectedness with community outside of the science and computing programs. For example, in our camp, one learner received technical support from a parent multiple times throughout the camp. As the parent made appearances in the learner's camera, they got to know the instructors and become more involved. Being at home allowed learners to introduce their family members or even pets. Other instructors utilized the home environment to include learners' identity or values in ways that were not possible in person. For example, they created activities where learners would find objects in their homes or rooms to share with the rest of the group. Instructors could utilize this as a point of connection between learners if they had similar interests or things to share from their homes. Other findings can be found in the paper. In conclusion, we show from our camp data and interview data that connectedness from a culturally responsive standpoint, uh, it looks different virtually in science education. And we also showed how it could be supported and addressed. In the paper, we share a number of design opportunities to enhance learners' experiences in culturally responsive programs. For example, utilizing virtual worlds for learners and instructors to have a sense of self-expression and social presence. Specifically, instructors also wanted the ability to reduce their social presence over time to let learners connect more on their own to one another. You can find more information about this in the paper. I want to thank my advisors for supporting me in, co in conducting this research, as well as the research team. Uh, please reach out to me if you have questions or would like to connect. And thank you so much for listening to my talk.